Welcome to Solo, the single person's guide to a remarkable life. Your host, a behavioral scientist and bachelor, talks to leading experts and successful singles about living solo and living well. Travel more, make things, sleep in when you want to. Here's the playbook for the person who is unapologetically unattached. Now, please welcome Dr. Peter McGraw. Welcome back. I'm delighted to invite an academic author and happy solo, Federico Castellano, to discuss his delightful book, Flaneur, The Art of Wandering the Streets of Paris. A Flaneur practices wandering without destination in order to take in the sights, sounds, and smells of the cityscape. We discuss the origins of the Flaneur, some best practices for Flaneuring, and like many of the topics that we cover here on Solo, how the Flaneur is unconventional. We also talk about some of our favorite cities to wander without aim. Finally, this was to be an episode in a forthcoming series on solitude. But as you'll discover, being a flaneur is a solo activity, but doesn't necessarily entail solitude. The flaneur typically operates alone, yes, but he or she may also connect to the crowd. I hope you enjoy the episode. Let's get started. Welcome to Solo, the single person's guide to a remarkable life. I'm Peter McGraw. Today's guest is Federico Castiano. Federico holds a PhD from the University of Turin in Italy. And after working for several years at French universities, he currently teaches comparative studies at Beijing International Studies University in China. Federico is an expert in the field of aesthetics and urban studies, and his research examines the relationship between art literature, and city spaces. We're here to talk about his wonderful, delightful book, Flaneur, The Art of Wandering the Streets of Paris. The book's been translated into four languages, thankfully, including English, which is the only one I can read. Welcome, Federico. Hi, Peter. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so prior when we were talking about this, you said that you did a little bit of research into solo and found that there's a connection yeah. between being a flaneur and being solo. Some point on in common, yes. So actually, I read uh, your um, website and I checked uh, your podcast and I found many points in common with uh, the theme of my book and with the idea of the flaneur. I want to say that being a flaneur, it doesn't mean being lonely. So I wanted really to emphasize the meaning of the word solo. Mm. And yeah, and the flaneur is someone that is unconventional. And this is the keyword I found in many uh, episodes of your podcast. <laughs> yes, it comes up a you lot. You really like this word, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Yeah, so fl flannering is a solo activity. Flannering is a remarkable activity and it's unconventional. So for these three aspects, I think we can match. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, first of all, thank you. We match. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for doing your homework. You, are, you clearly are an academic um, yeah. doing some background reading and listening. So let's talk about, I think this should become obvious to the listener on why I chose this. What is like? What is the history of the flaneur? What is a flaneur? What does a flaneur do? And let's get into a little bit about the rise of flaneuring in Paris, in particular. Yeah. Yes. This is the origin of of the flaneur. Actually, uh, the flaneur uh, used to be a solit solitary walking man, but it could be a woman also. So of we course. have the word the yeah. flaneurs. And uh, this man was wandering around the city, observing the landscape of the city and melting himself or herself into the crowd. And the word flaneur is a word that comes from the French verb flâner, that means uh, wandering around, mm -hmm. uh, walking without any destination, any goal in the city and enjoying this process. Yeah, so this word is so unique that we cannot really find 
a similar, a, a perfect translation in other languages, like in Italian or in uh, Spanish. And so when I translated my book, I decided to keep the French title for <laughs> every <laughs> edition of, of the book. So the Flaneur is a character who was born in Paris and historically he or she is related, related with the history of Paris. But nowadays, this is an activity that can be done everywhere, almost everywhere. So that's the interesting part of being a flaneur. So you don't need to be in Paris. You can do it everywhere. And most of the time, flaneur, uh, being a flaneur, it means traveling solo. So mm -hmm. that's the connection with your podcast. So a flaneur is a solo activity. You can very exceptionally find a partner uh, in a flannering, but um, when you walk around the city and when you explore a new area of the city and you are with a friend, you would maybe focus your attention in the conversation and in the exchange, human exchange with this person, but a flaneur should be focused more in the relationship with the uh, the environment and the space surrounding surrounding him or her. So that's why flannering is especially a solo activity. Okay, that's really fascinating because so when I was reading your book, I was like scribbling in the in the margins and underlying things. It's it's beautifully written, probably because you wrote it in in Italian first and then it was <laughs> translated. But I, one of the things I thought about was, so, so to flaneur is to wander without intention, yeah. A. B is to consume the city, the sights and the smells and the, and the views and the, the people and, and to discover. And so when I thought of it at first was why it works as a solitary activity versus um, as a dyad or as a duo is the aimless part of it all which is that it's just very hard if you're going to, it's hard to wander aimlessly with two people because there has to be some negotiation. I want to go this way. You want to go this way. Well, it doesn't work. But what, exactly. you just, what you just brought up was something I didn't even consider, and, and forgive me if I didn't read closely enough, and that is the act of being with someone else may inhibit the consumption, may inhibit the view and the smell and the and the thoughts and you know that you see because you're aware of this other person you're negotiating you're talking to them and that's going to to distract your attention is that is yeah. that right are those two things working against you that's totally right because actually you i want to underline the difference between having a walk and being a flaneur okay because and also the difference between traveling uh, and as a tourist and traveling as a flaneur if you just have a walk, uh, you can have a walk along the Champs Elysees in Paris. And also you can watch the buildings, the shopping windows, but it doesn't mean you're a flaneur because uh, being a flaneur, uh, it means creating a very special contact with the city and with mm -hmm. the human spaces and uh, losing somehow yourself. Uh, it means uh, giving up for a while your own identity and trying to create this special connection uh, with the city, the connection I talk about in my book. So uh, this connection is not only about what you watch and about what you, the smell, the sound of the city, mm -hmm. but also it's about your own identity, trying to not to consider yourself as so important in the in this city and trying to uh, marry the crowd that's the expression that Baudelaire that is one of the most important French authors that introduce the character of Flaneur in the 19th century Baudelaire used this expression marry the crowd it means uh, uh, create creating feeling part of the city part of the crowd and this is also the process uh, a flaneur must try to achieve uh, during his or her trip uh, um, when uh, they go abroad. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, that's really that's really great. I love this um, this notion. So you're connecting it to unconventional, right? So when people yeah. walk a city, the conventions are to walk to see the sights, to walk to get to work, to walk to get a coffee. You know, that you're these are the conventional walking activities within a city, and to to walk without those aims, yes, and to walk to just take it in clearly is not within the normal conventions. Yeah, so if Flaner establish a sort of intimate relationship with the city and with the space, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not just visiting the city, but uh, he is try or she is trying to learn something from the city and is trying to read the city. Uh, so there is a form of knowledge that the act of being a flaneur uh, brings you. This form of knowledge is, uh, first of all, because you can read the city as a text, maybe, like a, like a book, because the cities, contains, uh, uh, cities contain a lot of stories. And if you are a good observer, you can read these stories. And maybe you can, being like a reader of the history of the city and of the arts that was in the city. And the second part, the second knowledge you can get from being a flaneur, it's uh, you can forget yourself for a while. You can get lost in the city. You can maybe try to establish a new relationship yeah, with the space. So I want to get more into this idea of the city as story. And I think that's that's important because I think it I think it'll help the aspiring flaneur think about how to how to flaneur. Yes. Before we get into that, you you alluded to the rise of the flaneur in in the late 1800s and these authors were writing about this particular character. Yes. Who is this character? Describe this character. Is this is this a character that I can can identify? And why did flaneuring happen at this particular stage and happen in Paris? Okay, so first of all, at that particular stage um, in Europe, there was the second industrial revolution and Paris mm -hmm. was one of the epicenters of this uh, great changing in the, um, the economics, but also in the society of the and so a flaneur is a key, the flaneur is a key character of modernity. It's uh, because it's a new way of observing the city. Uh, the city at that time uh, changed radically. Um, there was a, a complete transformation of Paris that took place in the second half of the, 20, of the 19th century. So the old narrow streets of the middle age city were destroyed and uh, big avenues with the sidewalks, with the uh, shopping shops and cafes uh, were opened. So the city was made to be walked. That's mm. a specific characteristic of Paris. So if the flaneur appeared specifically in Paris is because the city had some characteristic. The city was made to be walked, was a great place was a place you can you could enjoy. Um, maybe you could live in the city like in your own house because you can sit on the chair in front of the uh, avenue, in front of the boulevard, and enjoying the um, the show of the city. You can just sit down with a coffee and admire uh, the people passing by. For example, so this is this activity is an activity that only uh, the specific characteristic of Paris made possible. The other, specific, yeah, no, no. So, so if I understand you correctly, the, the Paris that I know came about during this time. Yes, pa Paris became Paris at that time. I see. Became what we think immediately think Paris is, and also Paris is a very dense city. So actually, we can compare it with uh, Los Angeles. For example, if you wander around Los Angeles, maybe unless you are not running a marathon, uh, it's very difficult to 
um, to cross the city in one hour or two hours. But Paris mm -hmm. is very dense. And uh, a one hour or two hour walk, walk can bring you very far in Paris. You can go from one monument to another monument very easily. And so it's very dense. There is not empty spaces inside. So mm -hmm. the, uh, let's say that the fabric of the city is very, very um, dense. Yeah, so I use this word fabric because um, actually it's uh, in Latin, uh, fabric is uh, textus. The word textus in Latin means fabric. And actually, um, we could say that the city is like a story, like a text. To like be a read. tapestry, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there is a this word, I really like this word, textus, in Latin, because it gives us the idea of the city as a uh, urban structure, but also as a story, yeah, that you can that you can read. And that's, lo that's so lovely. Who so who is this Flanor though that these authors were writing about, and why why did this come about? I mean, so obviously a, a more walkable city leads to more walking, but why this particular form of sort of wandering aimlessly with the goal of sights and smells and marrying the crowd yeah I, I think it's there is a connection between literature and the urban development of paris um, from one side i think uh, the urban development of paris uh, created the possibility of being a flaneur okay but at the same time i think some french authors like balzac baudelaire maupassant and other uh, and other uh, authors, uh, they created, they gave a specific cultural meaning to this character. Okay. So um, the flaneur is, if I, if you want me to describe, so the flaneur is a gentleman normally, um, dressing up, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and normally very close to another character of nineteenth century Europe, that is the dandy. So. The flaneur lives in an unconventional way, and it could be a scandal in the crowd of the modern city because most of the people are walking in the street to go for going from A point to B point to get their business done. Mm -hmm. But the flaneur is not the same. The flaneur is just uh, walking without any goal, and the pace of the flaneur normally it's a uh, the way he walks is uh, much slower than the other people because he walks with his eyes, um, wh he works watching around the city and his senses are very uh, focused on creating this connection with the city around him, uh, creating a sort of intimate relation, relation with the city. So actually being a flaneur somehow, it means listening the voice of the city, uh, trying to read the story that the city has. And being a flaneur, um, it means some, the, the flannering is somehow an activity opposite to the introspection. So it's uh, some activity that brings you outside yourself and brings you to melt your identity with uh, the identity of the city. Oh, that's fascinating. So it was so interesting about that is oftentimes people seek out solitude to be able to reflect internally. And mm -hmm. so I think that that's interesting that the flaneur is reflecting externally, so to speak. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. For me, I mean, solid. The, I, I think flannering is a solo activity, as I previously said, but, um, but I don't like solitude. Yeah, it's not solitude at all. No, I, I feel very happy when I go, when I travel to a, new, a city far away. I, I don't know absolutely anyone and I leave my luggages in the hotel. And that's the best moment, you know, when you get dressed and you, you get out and start wandering around the city without any map. At the beginning, I like not to have any map mm -hmm. and just uh, going where the city leads me. And when I do that, I I really want to emphasize the difference between a flan a flanor a flanor traveler and a tourist because okay. uh, uh, when I travel I don't have 
um, expectations about the city. So I um, don't read so many information, so much information about the city before uh, visiting visiting it. I like I would like to be like a virgin, my mind to be virgin in uh, discovering the city and let the city give me, uh, let the city teach me what um, it, what they want. Yeah. So I don't want to be like a, a tourist. That's uh, one of the key point of being a flaneur, just refusing the tourism. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a, tour, a tourist is going to say, I need to see, I need to go here, I need to go there, we need to get here by Tuesday, we've got an appointment. Yeah, for this the tourist weekend. has a, a plan also, yeah, the tourist right. has a plan. So that's the difference, yeah. So um, actually, when you travel by yourself, you travel solo, uh, that's much better to be a flaneur, much easier to be a flaneur, because when you, ha- when you travel with your family, uh, normally you must have a plan <laughs> because if, if, especially if you have kids you cannot travel without a plan and without a destination because uh, if you are with your wife she would say, ask okay so what are we going to do today what are we going to eat but when i travel by myself i don't plan absolutely anything like especially for the food i don't i don't plan what i have to eat let's see i just uh, start walking in the city taking pictures uh, not checking the map too much and discovering something new. Um, I like the concept of uh, serendipity, uh, the concept of uh, a fortunate uh, discovery that the city can bring me. And this discovery can be, for example, the discovery of a monument, of a church, but also can be the, the me- uh, meeting someone totally new. Because when you travel by yourself, also you are open to the new so to our you are open to maybe to meet someone totally new uh, maybe some local person and this encounter maybe can give you can teach you a lot and i think this way of traveling it's um, much more interesting than the tourist uh, normal travel yeah Okay, so first of all, what I'm realizing is that this is probably not the right episode to put in part of a series on solitude, (laughs) right? And so I may have to pivot this as I hear this. You can change the title. (laughs) You can try to adjust the title. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I think that's. I think that's. Yeah. It's useful. Um, And so this this flaneur, you know, in the late 1800s. Um, mm-hmm. dressed up much like the dandy, right? The dandy yeah. was about looking very good, but also th- it does strike me as there's a bit of sort of status signaling that's happening here, right? As the, as the city bustles and mm-hmm. people are, are hustling to work, they're doing their commute, you know, yes. they're rushing, they're rushing to get to work on time. They're, 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 they've got an hour for lunch and they need to get to the, the place in order and get back to their office or back to their factory or whatever it may be. And, it. But, the, but the flaneur doesn't need to do that because the flaneur is typically higher socioeconomic status, is a, is a man of leisure of sorts. And his pace or her pace suggests... Only- Yes, originally. originally. Yes, and actually Paris was the first modern city. <laughs> so actually, it's not a coincidence that the flaneur was born in that city. Yeah. So originally, yes, the flaneur has a high status, but it doesn't mean that uh, for being a flaneur, you must uh, exact today. It doesn't. You you don't need to follow step by step exactly the character of the 19th century. So you don't need to dress up to to wear a tie to go flannering today. So that's just uh, the origin of the character, yes. And so you actually have a prescription about dressing to be a modern day flaneur. Uh, yeah, yeah. I try to uh, to observe, first of all, how people dress in, uh, in the city I visit. Because mm-hmm. if you go being a flaneur in, uh, in Rome pro- or in Milan, probably, uh, you must uh, dress in a particular way that is, uh, for example, the Italian fashion is more uh, colorful and more classic. And But if you go being a flaneur in Bangkok, for example, you can weigh in a more, you can dress in a more relaxing way. I think the f- I like, personally, I like to dress in a way that is uh, closer to the 
crowd. So I, I want to melt myself in the crowd. So I don't want people to notice me too much. So if you dress up in a, if you dress up, you risk uh, to lose this uh, pleasure, the pleasure of being anonymous and invisible in the crowd. And this is an, another uh, characteristic of the flaneur. So the flaneur likes also to disappear in the crowd. And there is a very interesting story by Edgar Allan Poe and a short story. And the title is The Crowd, The Man of the Crowd. So okay. actually the crowd is someone who likes to um, lose himself uh, to disappear in the city and in the crowd. So um, this very special relation I create with the city, it's uh, maybe the central point of being a flaneur more than the clothes. And so for me, I don't, I, personally, I try to copy the way of dressing of the local people, more or less, more, um, more or less. I think in the book you say to dress smart, but not too smart. Yeah, not too smart. Yeah, you, you, yeah, people don't. Yeah, because that's not the point. And also, you must wear some comfortable clothes <laughs> because if you really want to be a flaneur, you must be physically ready to walk for, for hours. hours. <laughs> yeah, for for hours. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, also that I like the feeling of walking, of being tired. Uh, and when I'm tired of walking in a city, I think uh, I feel this special connection with the city, much, much, a much stronger connection. Yeah, I like this, this feeling, yeah. And you know, I think that I like this idea of, if you don't wanna dress down too much, cause that's also distracting, yeah. fitting that in between. So the changes that I'm hearing, the evolution of the flaneur obviously is, is now it's non-gendered. Hmm. Now it's not a way to signal status. It's not a way to stand out per se, but rather it's a, it's a way to, to fit in. But what remains is this sort of artful wandering and the potential to connect not only in terms of architecture, in terms of sights and sounds, but also to connect perhaps to the people if serendipity may, uh, may occur, where you might have a conversation with a shopkeeper or passing by for anyone, yeah. <laughs> asking someone for directions or something like that or whatever it may be. And let's talk a little bit about this idea of the city as story, because you, you've alluded to it. You've talked about this tapestry. You, you, you have in the book, um, as I said, it's, it's like really wonderfully written. You talk about um, banality and the mundane. There's a, a sentence that I wrote down that says, ignore the banalities and the mundane things seen on television or read in newspapers. Yes. Um, to be free and alone in the maze of the city, the flaneur craves a revelation that might change his or her life. Mm. And so um, can you say a little bit more about understanding, this is connected to your research, I know, that yeah. the, the city as a story, the, un, the discovering of a plot that is magnificent, that's not mundane. Yeah, first of all, I'm... I would say that, um, yeah, before traveling in a city, especially a new city, I try to avoid uh, tourist guidebooks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's the first uh, suggestion I, I would like to give to someone who wants to try to be a flaneur or a flaneuse. So if I may, like, the, so the first one is to, to dress smart, but not too smart, to sort of try to fit in with the aesthetic so you don't stand out. Yeah, you must not stand out. Yeah, that's a, I think this is the key point. You must feel like a local. And this will help you also to, um, to meet more people if you want to meet some local people and create in con uh, connection with, with them. Yeah. So I, I don't mean to interrupt. And then the second one is to, to give up this hierarchy mm -hmm. of these are the good places and these are the not good places. Exactly. Yes? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So actually, um, the third one, I would say, don't uh, build a wall between what you are and or what you think you are <laughs> and what the city is and or what you think the city is. Because most of the people say, OK, I'm a traveler. I'm an American. I go to Thailand. This is I'm American. This is Thailand. These are those are Thai people. So actually, for me, the 
key is trying to give up for a while your own identity. And that's the only way you get, you can really uh, create this connection with the place you visit. And this operation, of course, is much easier to do when you are by yourself. When you travel solo, it's much easier. That's why I like traveling solo because uh, I can, um, I don't feel foreigner. <laughs> That's the point. Wherever I go, I don't feel foreigner. And this is uh, um, something to do with uh, also the fact I traveled a lot, but also this is a characteristic of the, the flaneur. Actually, mm -hmm. it's creating, creating this interconnection with, with the space. Yeah. Help me understand, like, you know, I would say this. I love to walk a city and I love to take it in. And I'm, I, I have to say I'm motivated to do it differently as a result of, of your work. Thank you for that. <laughs> and I want to, I want to encourage people to, to do this and to do this well within, you know, within their own set of goals. But how do I discover the story of a city? How do I understand the city as a plot? Yeah, first of all, yeah, you, there are different uh, techniques <laughs> to to discover to discover this. Um, I the first technique I I can uh, suggest it's um, the technique of uh, drifting, just uh, going in the city without any goal, without any destination and get ready to the unexpected. Get ready to listen uh, what the city can bring to, to us. Actually, I don't think the story uh, we are talking about, I don't think it's like a no, the plot of this story is not so, it might be not so linear, not so clear, but it's more like- um, It's like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, this uh, the movie. It's not. It's not a story. It's not a traditional uh, 19th century novel. Like it's not a Dostoevsky novel, maybe. But it's more like yes, um, a more a more contemporary movie. And so uh, actually, it's uh, you can get some different elements of the city, and it's the story. It's uh, uh, created in your mind. Actually, you can put these pieces together and yeah so i don't think you must uh, uh, read the city as a novel from the first page to the last page yeah so we can it's, say also it's a movie maybe the, it's like more similar to a movie yeah and and but the issue though is that if i walk paris and you walk paris we experience different movies yes absolutely yes right. yes so this what counts it's a uh, my relationship with the city and when yeah, I told you the example. I really like Thailand, for example. But the image or uh, the, the touristic image of Thailand um, is not what I like of Thailand. <laughs> so all right. the stereotypes about the country doesn't really match my experience of that specific country. Yeah. So for me, um, after my trips, my solo trips as a flaneur, I go back home with an image of a of a place that is doesn't match with the experience of other people <laughs> that's very interesting yeah so this um this sort of flaneur this lone wolf wandering the yeah. city does he or she do it fast do it slow is there a pace you know, originally the the original flaneurs walks more slowly but yes. is there is there a prescription in terms of of pace um the original flaneur wanted to show off the fact mm -hmm. he had not to rush because uh, his or her social status uh, was uh, higher and they didn't have to work. <laughs> but nowadays it depends. It depends. I try. It's like a music, actually. I, I try to go sometimes to walk faster, some, sometimes to walk slower. Sometimes I get excited because, for example, I, I notice in the landscape of the city some element that attracts me. So I, I want to reach that, for example, um, building I see far away. And sometimes I just uh, like to enjoy the sunshine on my face and I just uh, walk more slowly. So there is not really a prescription because actually being a flaneur is being free. So I don't want to give too many rules. It's just uh, some, some suggestion. And also you must be ready to the unexpected. The city will bring you 
to somewhere. The city will uh, teach you something. And so you can be, you can have this attitude, just to listen to the city more than to yourself, more than to your plan. So uh, being a planner, it, it means also wandering around without a plan and listen to, yeah, to what the city brings you. Yeah, I see. So it's more an absence of a goal than, than the presence of a goal. It's more like, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And also it's more about deleting uh, the stereotypes, deleting the common sense, the, the cliche, the ideas you have received about the place you are going to visit. Mm -hmm. And it's more like, yeah, that's maybe what the city can really teach you. It's more, it's not like a knowledge you built up brick after brick. It's not like a story that you write page after page, but uh, it's something different. It's more like uh, um, sort of freedom, mental freedom you acquired. Uh, uh, you uh, free yourself from the knowledge you used to have, the stereotypes, and this is maybe the biggest uh, um, advantage of being a flaneur. Yeah, which, which fits your advice about avoiding tourist maps and tourist guides and having this yeah. pre, prejudged element of the city. Uh, let me ask you a few questions. So, so I, I just, I have to tell you, I just am so delighted by this idea, this, this solo activity um, that, uh, you know, that has, that, that really to me feels very sort of uplifting. It gives, it gives a city a chance to be its best um, mm -hmm. in, in a sense. And um, I like the idea that it, it is really truly connected to this notion of freedom, which I think yeah. is, is is inherent in um, in the kind of unconventional thinking that this podcast uh, often tries to promote. You know that there's not a rule about fast or slow. Um, there's not a rule about how long or short. But I, I do have a, a few questions. Like, as a flaneur, then is it, it's okay to start to walk and then decide? this isn't right, I'm going to turn around and come back. And, and you know, that's, that, is, that is within the sort of... Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, totally possible. You, you mean come back home or, come, or go, or go just, to another place? Yeah, or just, you know, I, we, I've been going north. This doesn't feel right anymore. I'm going to now turn and go back south. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. What about, what about um, being altered as a flaneur? So, you know... Caffeine, alcohol, cannabis, psychedelics. What about wandering the city under the influence of uh, of something? Is that is that within some? Uh, it's not really my technique, but okay. uh, I understand it could be. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I personally don't need it, but uh -huh. I understand. Yeah, because for me, the the spectacle of the city it's exciting enough. But uh, for sure, um, more in general, I would say the, the, the being a flaneur has been uh, inspiring for many artists. Mm -hmm. And um, the impressionist, um, impressionist painters uh, in Paris in the 19th century were flaneur because they decided to paint their, um, to, to work outside the atelier outside their studio and they brought uh, their canvas outside in the street and they started to uh, paint the impression of the moment. That's why we call it impressionist. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe this is uh, the approach uh, that the flaneur can have with the city, like uh, trying to get the impression. And in this process, I, I understand yeah, maybe someone uh, would like also to use some uh, special uh, help, like uh, you, the, the one you mentioned before, maybe to get uh, high <laughs> and to to be inspired. But uh, I don't think it's uh, necessary. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't think it was necessary. I didn't know if it feels within some of this idea of freedom. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Okay. And... Yeah, yeah. Now, what about you mentioned taking pictures, but also I like this idea, and this is something that I, that I do when I like to walk a city prior to learning about this is I bring my journal with me. I bring a pen and a small journal. And yeah. so then I can stop and, and jot down notes and, 
and uh, what that's what I do as well. But I mainly use voice voice uh, ma messages. So I just okay. record myself and then I listen to myself because uh, oh, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah. So actually, sometimes I I walk with my headphones and yeah, I just uh, if I see something, I record my voice and I listen later. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So the okay. So the last couple things that I want to talk about, you know, so. Uh, is is this uh, is this notion of Paris hmm. as the epicenter, the starting point, the the place that where this um, the genesis of the Flaneur? Um, yeah. Reading the book, you know, the books, the subtitle is about uh, the art of wandering the streets of Paris, hmm. and um, and so is there a better city to to Flaneur in than Paris? Uh, Paris is really good okay. <laughs> and, and I, because, it, because it, my book is related with my research uh, about mm -hmm. this character in Paris but you can do it in almost anywhere I mean I, I haven't gone to any city where uh, it's impossible to be a, flan a flaneur for example now I'm in, in this moment I'm in Shanghai and I just uh, I'm in what is called the French concession of Shanghai. So it's uh, uh, very similar to the um, urban structure of Paris. And I really like to wander around Shanghai. So it's uh, not necessary. The Flaneur must not be in Paris. Yeah, it can be wherever he or she wants. Yeah, so no need to be in that city. But of but course, cities are better. Some, some cities, cities are better are, than yeah, 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 because uh, some cities, yeah, for example, I can give, give you an example. For example, New York and Los Angeles, for example. I think in New York, it's, in New York it's easier, even if the weather in Los Angeles is better, but because Los Angeles is made for cars. That's yeah. my impression when I went there. So if you don't have a car, you, it's very difficult to reach. But in New York City, in, especially in Man Manhattan, you can just walk around the city without uh, any car. You just uh, walk. It's a... Uh, possible and yeah some cities are better for sure yeah the cities where normally there is a bigger density and yeah. uh, where there is some history also because yeah. it's important because when you when you just to describe better this process of reading the city as a text actually also you can get in contact with uh, buildings or historical places uh, Mm, where mm, that brings you memories of the past, brings you the memory of the past of the city, but also about your own past. So if the city is totally new, uh, if uh, the city is uh, um, just uh, made in the last 20 um, years, so maybe you cannot enjoy this fact of a uh, being connected with the past and with the people who lived before us. So I think this characteristic, so for being a, fla a flaneur, I think it's better if you go to a city with a long past, so you can have a longer, uh, yeah, options, yeah, more options, yeah. So, so Beijing is better than Shanghai, for example. Uh, not necessarily, because uh, <laughs> Beijing, first of all, uh, it's very cold, and that's one reason why at the moment I'm in Shanghai, because now it's uh, we have all holidays in China. Yeah. So I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm in Shanghai because uh, here it's warmer, so I can walk around. And Beijing, I think, in somehow is much more similar to Los Angeles because oh, there are. Like five big ring roads surrounding the city, and sometimes uh, uh, the walker. Uh, sometimes I found my I found myself the only guy walking in Beijing. You know, like I see you see cars in every direction, and people just uh, use because today it's a very busy city. So people just want to go from home to work, or they want to go shopping, and they just call a taxi, like a Uber, every time and. Um, me sometimes I found myself like the only guy who is walking in the I city. See. Oh, interesting. So that goes against my my intuitions. I, I'll put forth my two candidates for myself personally. Yeah. Um, the first one is London. 
I mm-hmm. love to walk London. Um, it's a very walkable city. It's not a, for people who've never been to London, it doesn't have the skyscrapers that New York City has. Mm-hmm. And so it feels very open. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of sky in London. Um, and I think that that's, that's very fun. But you also have to sort of stay on your toes because the cars are on the opposite side of the street. And so it makes you a little bit more present um, that, that's there. It's also, as an American, it's familiar because you can read the signs and, and know what the shops are for. Um, mm-hmm. And you can ask questions, but it also feels exotic because of the accents and the different language. Um, and then also there's the shared history and so mm-hmm. there's these familiar, you see Abbey Road and, you, you know, you see King's Cross and, and Hyde Park. And, you know, there's a familiarity that's there, but also more original. And so that's yeah. my first one that I, I like a lot. Um, and I look forward to, to using this technique the next time I'm in London. The other one that I like is Tokyo. Hmm. And, and in part, and, and Tokyo is, is, is um, appealing for a different set of reasons, and that is um, it can slow you down because there's so much happening. Like a, a one block of Tokyo could take you an hour to, to go down because there's, there's so much to see and hear and smell. Um, and it is, it is very exotic and different. Um, and yet still somewhat familiar because of Japanese culture, you know, has reached the West. Yes. Totally. Yes, yes. But personally, yeah, I, I've been to Tokyo as well <laughs> by myself for, I, I spe- the other point is when I travel in a, in a city, I like to take my time. I, I, I don't like to go for a weekend. This is mm-hmm. not the way I normally travel. Um, I like to stay for at least, if, if I can, for at least two, three weeks or even longer. So normally okay. when I go, for example, visiting Tokyo, I, if I plan to stay in a city, I like to stay for maybe one month. Oh, interesting. Yeah, my, my counterpoint to that is, um, and I'm actually taping this while I'm in a hotel, um, I like hotels for short trips. And the reason mm-hmm. is they're often in a place that already lends itself to walking. And so mm-hmm. to me, that's, that's my, my counter. But I completely understand the, the desire to have, to have a space. Are there any cities, like sort of non-obvious cities, that you and your experience, you feel lend itself to being a flaneur? That, you know, that are better. You said mentioned Bangkok. I, know, I hadn't thought about Bangkok. I've always wanted to go to Thailand and to see, yeah. to see Bangkok. And I, I hear wonderful things about the food and the culture and so on. What are some other places that, might, um, that people might not, not think about that you would say, oh, this would be a great, this is a great city to wander aimlessly in, to nobly wander aimlessly? Uh, okay, so I'm from Italy, so uh, <laughs> I can give you many examples about the Italian cities. Um, I would say, for example, Venice, uh, for the obvious reason that there are no cars. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, actually, you're but not, cars. not when there's tourists. You have to go when it's quiet, no? Uh, yeah, but but people in Venice just follows. Uh, I mean, you can find the tourists just in always in the same uh, three four streets, and you just uh, uh, step away from them, and it's empty. The I city see. is totally empty. It's just uh, just don't follow the <laughs> the other people. It's very simple. Yeah, and the other point I like of Venice is that you can really get lost. Mm-hmm. This is one characteristic I like of Venice is that. Um, if you don't have a map, if you don't have a GPS, you can easily get lost, even if the city is not very big. But the point is, uh, there are so many canals and the buildings, might, um, they are so, um, it's so confusing, <laughs> the, the plan of the city that um, you can easily get lost or you can get trapped in a little island. And so, yeah, that's a city that can give us a very special experience of uh, flannery. Very different from the Paris experience. Yes, I can see. Oh, that's interesting. I would not have thought about about Venice. I would have thought, you know, other other Italian cities, obviously. Mm-hmm. Any yeah. any others besides um, Italian cities that come to mind? Uh, well, personally, I like Rome. <laughs> I, I'm not from Rome. I'm from the north of Italy. Uh, I really like Rome because uh, actually. Uh, 
I think in Rome, not uh, you will not be the only flaneur. There are a lot of flaneur in, in the city. I mean, it's uh, it parts of the way of life of the people there, just to live in the street, to um, how to say, yeah, they they live in the street like as the street where their own house. So especially mm-hmm. the shops, for example, they tr- they don't only take care of the interior of the shop, but also of the sidewalk and the pavement outside the um, outside the shop. So normally they decorate the street with some flowers, some plants. So in that way, I think um, the city feels like being a house, a home. No, and so the ex- the, the, the the public place becomes. Uh, uh, there, there is not a border between public space and private space. So that's a, a characteristic of Rome, I think, I really like. Not a very clear border. So when you are outside, it feels like also you are inside a house. Federico, I think you just gave me a wonderful gift because I've been to Italy in the summer a number of times and I struggled with all the tourists. And what you have suggested to me is that if I go as a flaneur and I walk the city and and because I'm I'm away from the tourist places, I actually get to see the best of the city at the best time of year. Yeah. And, um, now, and so now I can plan my... If you can reach uh, Italy now, it will be a perfect moment, but I, I'm not sure you can find a, a flight. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, not yet. And so the last thing I want to talk to you about is um, your own soloness. So this is yeah. a word that you um, that resonates with you. Yes. Solo. More than the word single, the word solo. Like the word. What, what yeah. is it about that word? Uh, because some, I'm not always single, <laughs> but I'm always mm-hmm. solo. <laughs> solo for me, it mm-hmm. means... I dis- I'm responsible for my life and I decide independently. Uh, I, I take decision for my independently. So this is, uh, mm-hmm. and I don't think I'm lonely <laughs> and I don't think people who are in a relationship, I don't think everyone who is in a relationship of married is uh, less lonely than me or less single than me. <laughs> so I think mm-hmm. uh, the fact of being solo means, uh, yeah, to be being aware of that. Yeah, no, I think that that's right. And, and uh, you know, obviously we have identified an, a perfect hmm. activity for the solo because to flaneur and to be solo have so much overlap. It's about freedom. You know, it's, it's without necessarily having to consult. And, and having that sort of autonomy over your your steps, yes. your your observation, um, and not have to negotiate with uh, you know with someone else in order to be able to do that. And I think that that in the same way that being solo is a bit unconventional, so is um, the act of nobly wandering a city in mm. order to meet the crowd, so to speak. I think that that's a that's a really wonderful. Uh, perspective. And I, Federico, I want to say thank you so much for doing this. I want to thank you for writing this really lovely, wonderful book. If people are interested in learning more and being more inspired besides reading your book, is there any other resources that they um, they could look to? Uh, yeah, if they want to have um, a view of the, um, about the historical character of the Flaneur, yeah, mm-hmm. I really suggest uh, uh, Baudelaire, for example. Yeah, uh, Charles Baudelaire. It's uh, the starting point, I think. The poems and the poem and prose, the poems, the pr- uh, prose poem of Baudelaire. I think uh, they are considered the the starting point. And mm, in general, uh, yeah, the the bibliography can be very very big. So uh, I <laughs> I just uh, want to mention this book as a starting point. That's great. Federico, I will let you get your day going. And as mine comes to an end, and I, I want to say thank you so much. And it would be wonderful one day to, to wander across you walking yeah, a city at the same time. That's what I'm going to do right now. That's what I'm going to do right now after the end of our conversation. Yeah. And thank you, Peter, for inviting me. Cheers. Cheers. 
Thank you for listening to Solo, the single person's guide to a remarkable life. For more about our guests and show notes, go to petermcgraw.org. Please subscribe and share with your single friends.